The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was a governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to the town of David called Bethlehem since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside, close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly hosts praising God and singing. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Very good evening to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So finally, the night has arrived, Christmas, that night which we have been longing for, that day of rejoicing, that day of happiness, of joy, and of peace that we all look forward to that comes every year at the end of the year. Now, no matter how the year has been, good or bad, and especially if it has not been a very good year for some of us, at least Christmas is an opportunity to cheer ourselves up and not be so gloomy. Now, this year so happens, actually, I did not have the heart to celebrate Christmas. Okay, don't be surprised. Just because I'm a priest does not mean I'm excited about everything that has to do with our faith and religion. And it's because this year, my mother died. Yes. And so, I did not want to celebrate Christmas. It's true, because she's not here. At least not in the flesh. Anyhow, fortunately, I went to a friend's house some a week ago or so, and I told that person actually that I did not feel like celebrating Christmas anyway. <laughs> and I asked her why she celebrated Christmas and what was it to her. And she told, she told me actually about how she sees Christmas as joy, as hope. And she spoke to me about the Christmas lights. She said she looks forward to decorating the house, to getting it ready for visitors, for guests, and for giving gifts. Now, that little sharing of this person uh, cheered me up a little bit because she reminded me 
that Christ came in the darkness. He brought light into this world of darkness. And so, in fact, the person who needed Christmas this year was me. And for that reason, I should be excited for it and I should celebrate it. So, this year actually, after that little sharing of this friend of mine, who told me, uh, reminded me of the joy of Christmas, reminded me of the light of Christ that has come in the darkness. So this year is the first year I actually took the time to put up a Christmas tree with lights in my brother's place here in Saramban. Usually we priests, we are so busy. It's decorating church, decorating everything else, hearing confessions, penitentials, this, that, everything. Um, having open house and whatever it is at the monastery, usually my brother's place will be left barren, undecorated. But this year, um, in response to this need to welcome the light of Christ into my own home, I decided to put up a Christmas tree and to put up the lights. Yeah, and put some very simple ornaments. So thank you to this sister who shared with me, who reminded me that it is precisely because of the darkness of our lives that we need Christmas. If we are happy and joyful already, then what is the need of the birth of the Saviour? If this world was already all beautiful cherry blossoms, 365 days of the year, if there were no war, no famine, no darkness in our lives, why would we rejoice at the birth of the Saviour? What would we need to be saved from? And that is at the very heart of Christmas. We are celebrating the birth not just of any baby. We are celebrating the birth of the Saviour. Jesus our Lord. And we know that this baby is that light that has come into the world that has been so damaged and hurt by darkness, by sin and by death. And it is in the new life of a new little baby that God brings light and hope into this despairing world. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, the world is in need of a saviour. We are in need of a saviour. And that is why Christmas is meaningful for every one of us. Now, at the end of this Christmas message, I would like to remind us, dear brothers and sisters, that there are many people in the world who actually are not able to celebrate Christmas. Think of the people who are going through a time of war, who are running away from the violence that is being committed against them, driven out of their homes. For them, this year, there is no Christmas to celebrate. Think of the children who have no food. Think of the poor. Think of the sick. Think of the elderly, the homebound, the bedridden. And think of the persons who at this moment, maybe even they are struggling at the last moment of their life as the clock ticks. And rather than welcoming life, death is just at the doorstep. For them, Christmas is a very lonely moment. And they too may fall into the temptation of despairing. We pray for them that they will not despair, that the light of Christ will somehow penetrate into their darkness. And at this moment, as we celebrate joyously the birth of Jesus, we pray that some of that joy that we are experiencing will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, also be transferred to their suffering hearts. So for all those people whom we may not know, or maybe we may know some person such as that, it may be even in our own family, 
And if we have an opportunity to actually go and visit them, go and spend time with them, then let us make an effort to do so this Christmas. If we have neglected them in the past, then today let us make a commitment, a promise to our Lord that we will not celebrate Christmas without them. And we want to include them in our Christmas joy. So my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for listening to my sharing. And uh, yes, I needed Christmas to happen this year. And I thank God that He came into the world, yes, to save me and to bring joy and peace into my life. Poor, broken Father Kenneth. And I pray that this light will always be available for every broken person on the face of this earth.